Andrew. And last but not least, Ken Nicole. I'd like to welcome you all to the uh, seventh Democratic debate. <laughs> Contestants should be warned that their answers should be limited to a minute and a half. And Mr. Cox will be keeping the clock. Well, in fact, this amazing Farscape debuted 20 cycles ago in March of 1999. At the time, it was a completely different world. There was an in the president was being impeached. <laughs> Times have changed, and here we are now. So, anyway, the way this is going to work, I'm going to do a quick round of questions to talk to all the cast members here, make sure everybody gets a chance to speak, and then we, as soon as possible, we will throw it out to the uncharted, uh, you know, frontier here. Territories. Territories, that's the word I suddenly sampled on. Okay, and I believe there's a mic. When we come to, when it's time for the... Right here, right here is the mic. Yes. For any audience members that want to ask a question, the mic is right here. Mic. We'll get you soon enough. Yes. So, okay, um, just to start us off here, I think it is altogether appropriate that we start off with, in fact, the creator of Farscape, Rocky O'Bannon. So, 20 cycles later, what about Farscape are you most proud of? Um, there's just so many things I'm proud of, uh, but I, to me it's, it's uh, the fact that it, if you watch it today, uh, it, it's the same. It's, it, it, the, the effects, the performances, the, every, every aspect of it is, is something that um, uh, really stands up, I think, in a particular way. And, and also, there's uh, a number of things that uh, have come since where uh, the, the makers have uh, said that Farscape was one of their inspirations. Mm -hmm. I'm very, uh, very proud of them. Such as perhaps Guardians of the Galaxy? Mm -hmm. And you have anything to say about Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> well, I'll jump on the, uh, the, the thing which is, which is, I think, I'm most proud of, and that's to be a part of something which is art, not product. Art endures, art moves. Uh, product is there for a minute to make a buck, and I, and I think that Farscape is art, which is why it holds up today, which is why it looks, which is why all of you guys are here, because it, it is art which you relate to, hopefully, and, and uh, we never under, and underestimated the, the intelligence of our audience. So, uh, as the Guardians of the Galaxy, man, I think it's great, especially the second one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, Claudia, I think we all realize here that Aaron evolved amazingly and enormously over the course of the series. But I was wondering, what about Aaron never changed? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> Shooting makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, and her love of, her love of guns and her love of her man. Those were the two constants, guns and Crichton. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally more than one Crichton. <laughs> Anthony, I must say you were looking remarkably hale for a dead man. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. ha, ha, ha. Sorry. Sorry. Not dead. dead, not really dead. In your rebellion here already. So, you know, what do you think about, you know, Gargle's grand and glorious demise? There's nobody. <laughs> There's nobody. Dargo wins. Dargo. I was super upset when they talked to me about it, and, and you never know what's going what's, what's going to come. But um, dear dear friend of ours is now departed. Um, Andrew Prowse, who is a producer and director on the show, he said, "Don't worry, we're going to shoot it away. <laughs> Where anything's possible, don't get upset. Things will be fine." So, just leaving the possibilities possibilities open. But regardless of one way or the other, whether he's dead or whether he's not, um, 
Yeah, it was a great, I, I enjoyed the moments with the cast on that day uh, on set. It was weird because it wasn't my last day of shooting, so it wasn't like my good, good day, goodbye day. That was quite upsetting, the actual goodbye day. Uh, but I enjoyed the connection with each of the cast as they were, as they were coming, coming so through. Fun. Yeah, kneeling at my crutch. <laughs> <laughs> Gunning hand. I'm not touching that. Look me in the eye. Look me in the eye like you hate me. And then we're all good to go. Gigi, what do you think Gianna is up to these days? Stop putting your feet in my face, I think. Uh, Goodbye to Donna. I don't know what Gianna's up to, but I know what Gigi's up to and what we're up to now is one of the highlights of my absolute life, and it's because of you guys, to be hanging out with this beautiful Farscape family again. It was very emotional last night. People on my makeup, my guys like, oh my god, if you started now, we're in trouble. I don't know if, whether you guys know, but this is a proper, true, true reunion. A lot of these guys, we haven't seen each other for many, 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 many years. So thank you so much for allowing this to happen. Lonnie, well, you are actually here representing not one, but two, count them, two characters. What was it like to play two different characters on the show? Two major characters. Well, you had to be slightly twisted, doesn't it? Just for playing the characters. And uh, that's, that's what it felt like. It was kind of psychotic. Um, but I bought some lines, actually, for a for, 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 uh, pilot, which I found when I was packing. So, because not many people knew that I was actually doing two roles. Even, even the crew, until we... We used to have Friday nights screenings and then the credits would roll up and the crew would go oh 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 pilot oh should you do pilot too <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that's what i'll tell you it was great i mean you I'll, said I'll something flip. about how very different those voices those characters were that no if i didn't read credits i wouldn't have a clue that they were the same thank you it's behind them yes thank you so yeah. Okay, between, in fact, Sequest, Galactica 1980, and Farscape, you are a genuine sci-fi veteran. Woo! Yeah. Um, do, you, do you feel a special affinity for science fiction? No, it just kind of happened. <laughs> well, actually, actually, you know, for those of you who don't know, I was originally signed to do Galactica, Battlestar Galactica. And because of the network uh, differences and things that happened, I didn't, and then wound up doing what was supposed to be the revival of Galactica with Galactica 1980. And Glenn and I had set out to do the day the Earth stood still, to be a, a character who came from outer space to create peace on Earth. And we wound up in a Sunday night, uh, seven o'clock time slot, where they insisted we have children which destroyed the whole show and it was not one of the highlights of my life. However, one of the highlights of my life was, too, I just shared this with Brogdon just a while ago, was working with Roy Scheider on Sequest, and I became a, a recurring on Sequest, and then uh, I shared this yesterday with some of the people that, it was two o'clock in the morning on a Monday morning when I got a call, and I don't know if you were on the other end of this call or not, Brogdon, but David Kemper called, and he said, are you awake? to me, and I said, I am now, and uh, he said, do you have a passport, current passport? I said, yes, I do, and he said, uh, are you doing anything this week? And I said, no, I'm not, and he said, would you like to come down to Australia? We're doing this show that I told you about a couple of years ago called Sequet, or Farscape, and we'd love to have you come down and play Dad. I said, I'm on the way, and that was the way that uh, my life with this wonderful group of actors began. I got on an airplane that night at 10 o'clock, wound up in Sydney, Australia at, uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday, brought my own wardrobe, went to wardrobe, they looked at it, they said, wear this, this, and this. Great, you're the first person completely wardrobed on this show. And uh, worked the next day, 
did ADR, got back on a plane. You and I were flying back. It was my 57th birthday. We crossed the international date line. I turned 56 again. I, I didn't know if I became 114. I didn't know what I was. But Rock and I, you know, we shared the flight back. Uh, I was gone from my house in Hollywood for 105 hours. Thought I would never return because we shot Ben off through a, through a wormhole and he was gone. When I then received another call saying we we've created a way to bring you back, we extend that second character on the shoulders. I'm forever grateful to tell you the truth. You know, I, I remember. I remember flying back with you, and it's an overnight flight. So I literally tell people that I've slept with Kim McCoy. <laughs> I thought that was just a rumor. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> well, in that case, I think, you know, I don't want to hog this mic too long. Do we, have, do we have people ready at the mic for the audience? Very you. Okay, do we have the first question from the audience? Hi, my name is Erin. This is for everyone. I was wondering, what's it like to know that you're part of a multi-generational fandom? What's it like to be, know you're part of a multi-generational fandom? Sorry, excuse me. Tell them how you spell your name. A-E-R-Y-N. Oh. Is that your, your, your birth name? Yeah. That is my legal birth name. That's fabulous. Um, you know, first of all, like, at a time, kind of the earliest days of uh, social interaction uh, between fans and, and, and the audience and, and, the, um, and the makers of the show. So it was, it was, it's great that it began as early as that. And just kind of watch it continue has been, has been terrific. And the very fact that it's 20th anniversary and yeah, we've got a crowd like this here is pretty remarkable. It's really remarkable. I have to comment, by the way, I actually, my local comic book um, shop owner named his first child Aaron and spelled it A-E-R-Y-N as well. So, it's moving up there in the baby book names. I don't know if you guys realize, but a lot of us are quite big geeks as well. Uh, just to prove the point, my daughter's name, who's 11 months old, her first name is Sky, and her middle name's Walker. Yeah! yeah. The next contestant. Hi, Skywalker. Okay. Hi. Um, this is the World Cup. I keep hearing rumors about uh, Foskett coming back, being set, being uh, set for the Titan trial. Um, is there any truth to that? We are not done with Foskett. <laughs> We hate to keep saying mutation, uh, but I'll say it one more time here today. But we are truly, things are in the works uh, to bring it back. So, um, uh, it's uh, it helpful to us that it's uh, currently uh, airing again on Amazon. Rewatch, get your friends to watch, uh, give, it, you know, give it high scores there. That's all that's going to be super helpful to us. But uh, Ryan and I are in. in constant uh, communication about this and uh, things are being prepared for that. So Hello guys, I'm Daryl. Some of you may know me. Yeah. I've seen you a few times. Uh, welcome, thanks for coming back. I think we're a quick pleasure. We've been talking many times. We love the show because we can identify with all the characters, even if you're not quite 100 percent that character. Daddy, you want to answer? Has there ever been like a character you're like, that really should be my line? <laughs> this is actually a phenomenon which would occur, which would occur on set, where uh, there were occasions where we would read through the scene, and someone like Andrew Prowse, who's hugely responsible for, you know, God bless him for for what you see in the finished product. We would read through a scene and then and then it would be, okay, what are we gonna lose? Wait a minute, that sounds like a Dargo line. Anthony, you got that line? But 
which was it was horrifying for anyone who uh, was coming out of the set for the first time because they'd gone <laughs> home and learned all of their lines as you're supposed to do, and we were well aware that uh, the, the way we were operating on Farscape, which was we were constantly adjusting, we would show up on set and there would be a creature described in the text as a monstrous, horrible creature, and he looks like tandoori chicken. So, you now have to adjust, and it's no longer called this, oh, that's the tandoori chicken, hmm. So, but, but it often happened that because of either the way the scene is blocked, or also because, well, that doesn't exactly sound like Brighton. Uh, hey, uh, would Gianna say that? And then Gigi would pick it up and she would say it, so there, there was a fluidity about it. it. Didn't happen all the time, but it certainly, did happen, and then sometimes there would be adjustments. That goes on all TV shows to some degree, um, except the TV shows where the executive producer writer is there on lockdown, but it certainly happens in film that producing a television show like Farscape is a collaborative art form. Uh, you know, the writers give you this great stuff to work with, and then all of the departments go away and create and build upon it, and then you get on set and you build upon it, and then they get into the edit and they save your performance or they make your performance better and then the music comes on top of it so yes that certainly happened but that's only part of an entire process which means that thousands of people poured their soul and their heart into the art which is Farscape. I'd like to add to that because you hear a lot of artists and actors talk about the word collaboration because it's a collaborative art form but there's a necessary hierarchy on a film set that enables efficiency. And if you didn't have that hierarchy, um, 